Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ria and welcome to my channel The Lady Dentist. We help you to master dentistry and progress a bit every day. Are you searching for a video to gain an understanding of apexification in depth? Then this video will teach you the definition, indications, what is blunderbuss and non-blunderbuss canals, materials that are used for apexification and the complete procedure using MTA which is a single step procedure and calcium hydroxide which is a multiple step procedure with clinical presentation. Let's analyze the definition first. Apexification is a method to induce a calcific barrier. So what it induces? It induces apical closure by the formation of mineralized tissue. Now across an open apex of an immature pulpless tooth. What it means? It means the apical third is open which is obviously seen in an immature tooth and pulpless means non-vital. So it is a procedure that is performed in an immature non-vital tooth with open apex to bring out closure of the apical third by forming calcific barrier. So in turn this calcific barrier help us to obturate the canal. I hope you are clear with the definition. Now let's get into indications. The first point as I said earlier it is indicated in a non-vital permanent tooth with open apex. Secondly in case of thin and fragile canal walls because mineralized tissue formation will prevent fracture of the root. Next in cases where it is difficult to achieve absolute dryness of canal. Lastly, it is also indicated in blunderbuss canals, means a tooth root apex that widens at its end. And non-blunderbuss means the walls of the canal may be parallel to slightly divergent. Now we will see for this procedure what are the materials used. Several materials have been used as per the book such as collagen calcium phosphate gel or tricalcium phosphate yet none is as effective in promoting a calcific barrier as calcium hydroxide and MTA. In clinics, calcium hydroxide and MTA is the only used material for apexification. Now comes the procedure. Before starting with apexification, check the tooth clinically for color, mobility, tenderness and swelling. Then take periopical radiograph for further evaluation. After you are sure that the patient is free from any acute signs and symptoms, then start with the instrumentation. First, anesthetize the tooth with LA and apply rubber dam properly. Then gain a straight line access to the pulp chamber. Here I attach some pictures of axis cavity preparation shapes. Take a screenshot if you want. For anterior till canine, it is triangular in shape and in premolars it is ovoid or oval. For molars it is triangular or trapezoid in shape. Next as in our city, remove the pulpal debris and necrotic tissue from the canal using barbed brooch or a k-file. Flush out the canal debris with proper irrigation using saline, sodium hypochlorite and 2% chlorhexidine. After that you determine the working length by taking a radiograph which should be at least 2 mm short of the radiographic apex of the tooth. Circumferentially enlarge the canal by using sequential file numbers and then recapitulate in between with saline to remove any infected dentine from the canal walls. Now take a paper point as the size of master file and dry the canal. Either proceed by using MTA which is a single step procedure or calcium hydroxide which is a multiple step procedure. Let's dive into MTA procedure first. After cleaning and shaping the canal, place calcium hydroxide dressing for 1 to 2 weeks. Then mix MTA with distilled water in a wet sand consistency to a ratio of 3 is to 1 and place it in the canal with the help of amalgam carrier. Or you may also carry it with the MTA carrier and deliver the paste. Then using a pre-fitted plugger, condense the MTA well to create an apical plug of 3 to 4 mm. Recall the patient after 48 hours and check for apical barrier formation by taking radiographs. 
but after placing MTA, do not leave the patient without placing a moist cotton pellet over the MTA and then seal it with ZOE. As MTA sets under moist condition, so the wet cotton pellet is used. Setting of MTA and apical barrier formation is checked after 2 days or 48 hours and then obturate the canal using gut aperture. Again, recall the patient after 3 to 6 months to check for the success or prognosis of the treatment. Now, a case presentation with MTA. You can see an open apex tooth with periapical lesion. Then, after cleaning and shaping, 2 to 3 mm of apical plug of MTA is created. After that, when patient is called after 48 hours, apical closure is checked and obturation is done using thermoplasticized obturation. This is a radiograph of one year follow up showing the tooth being clinically and radiographically asymptomatic. Now, the other procedure is multiple step apexification with calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide is the most common and traditional material employed for inducing apexification. However, this technique is typically a multiple visit approach which takes a period of 6 months to 4 years to complete. Mix calcium hydroxide with sterile water in a thick consistency or with an aesthetic solution. Then using an amalgam carrier, deliver the paste into the canal and condense it with finger pluggers. After that, fill the entire root canal with calcium hydroxide paste and you should ensure that the material is in contact with the periapical tissue. Then seal the access cavity with resin modified GIC. Patient is then recalled after 3 months and radiographic evidence of calcific barrier is checked at or near the root apex of the tooth. Here you can encounter two scenarios. Formation of calcific barrier and no formation of calcific barrier. If there is formation of calcific barrier, then obturate using thermoplasticized technique. If no calcific barrier formation, then change the dressing of calcium hydroxide and recall the patient after every 3 months till you create a calcific barrier at the root apex. Now, presenting a case of 15 years old boy with history of trauma to the maxillary central incisor. As you can see, the root apex is open with necrotic pulp and large periopical lesion. So, the tooth has been debrived 2 mm short of the radiographic apex. Calcium hydroxide is then placed into the canal up to the apex. After 3 months, the radiograph shows complete resorption of calcium hydroxide but the apex is still open. And another interesting thing is the lesion has been healed completely. As there is no apical barrier formation, calcium hydroxide is placed again. And then again the patient is called after 10 months for evaluation of apical barrier. Here you can see there is apical barrier formation. So now the canal is obturated with gut aperture. I hope you like the video. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon.